All right, cool. Well, every, we're live, everybody. Welcome to um, this new thing that Google's doing. This is called a, a Google Plus conversation series. They're doing this in uh, many different disciplines. Uh, this one happens to be all about photography and stories. And this has kind of been hosted and, and run on the HDR photography community. Uh, so everyone is come, uh, welcome to come join that community. I think there's over 180,000 people in it or something. It's crazy. And it's just a place where we all kind of experiment with uh, post-processing. And really, I think we all like to tell stories through photos. And that was sort of the impetus and the idea behind this, uh, this particular hangout. And so I'm going to, this is different, a different kind of thing than I, I normally do. Um, the way this came about was a little bit different, but I'm super excited about it. Um, each of these people you see in these other boxes down here, uh, they all entered sort of a, a contest. They put up a, a story and a photo. And uh, they were selected uh, you know, by, by me and Google and everyone for this event. So we're going to get to know all these people and their, their photos and their stories. And maybe I'll tell some and they can ask me questions. And we'll just kind of see how this thing goes. All right. So let's go through um, introductions real fast. And I'll kind of uh, jump around here. So Paul, let's start with you. Uh, Paul Kamona, and I'm from Sydney. Yes, you live in Sydney. So. I'm going to show you a sneak preview of something that uh, from Paul. Let me share my screen here. Okay, screen share, and then I'll click this photo. So uh, Paul shared a, a wonderful, very personal story and this amazing photo too, of course. But just in the short time that he shared it, it's already been seen down here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see this. They just moved this down to the bottom, by the way. But the number of views, it already has over 211,000 views. So this little story they just kind of put up on on the internet, you know, by himself one night, I guess. Now it's been seen by over 200,000 people. So just in case um, you don't know this story, maybe you don't, um, we're going to have him. Uh, we're going to have him tell it also. All right. So he'll be kind of first up to bat after the other introductions. That little sneak preview. Okay, uh, Andrew, you want to go next? Yeah. My, hi, my, I try, hi, everyone. My name's Andrew Gerard. I live uh, in Vancouver, Canada. So. Yes, and you are also oh. involved in the magical arts, yes? I am. I have a few different things that I do in that realm. I'm a hypnotist and a psychological thought reader, whatever that is, and uh, I produce television shows in this genre. So all the stuff you see on TV, Mind Freak with Chris Angel, David Blaine, uh, I am a uh, producer. I create and design effects that those guys do on the show and produce them. So. Ah, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for telling me that. That's good. Um, and next, let's go with uh, Danny. I think you might be muted, Danny. Uh, there's a little mute button up there on the top. You can click and then... All right, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go for it now. All right, so my name's Danny Levin. I live near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And um, I'm not a professional photographer. I'd like to be maybe someday, but um, I'm, I do photography for a hobby. I've been doing it maybe 15 years. And uh, it wasn't until maybe about two years ago, I think, when I bought Trey's awesome um, HDR video tutorials that I really got excited about it, um, just seeing you know, how awesome the pictures come out. And so that's a little bit about me. I wanted to say, because I don't know if I have another opportunity, but Trey, thank you very much for all your insights. Ah, oh, you got muted. Oh. Yeah. That's okay. He was just about to say something nice. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Well, thank, thank you very much, Danny. You can uh, come back to that when we, when we circle back to your, uh, your situation. All right? Okay. Sorry. Um, so, uh, uh, by the way, no one is required to say anything nice about me at all. We could just hang out, and it's very nice of you. <laughs> all right, Guy, you're up next. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Guy. Uh, Guy Parks from Auckland, New Zealand, uh, almost home of the uh, Next America's Cup. But uh, the uh, USA uh, managed to hold on to that. But uh, yeah, keen amateur photographer, and looking forward to uh, sharing the story. Good. Yeah, this is actually one of my favorite kind of photographer. These keen amateur photographers. I think the word photographer is so uh, unusual nowadays. Anyway, people don't know what kind of photographer to call themselves. And I think if you don't know what kind to call yourself, this is actually the most interesting kind of all. All right, so next, uh, Jesse Summers. What's up, Jesse? 
Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jesse Summers. I do a lot of landscape and uh, night sky photography, which usually consists of me walking around in places I don't know too much about, dropping my camera lenses in the water, in the ocean, <laughs> off cliffs. So that's that's about it. I spend a lot of money on camera gear and yeah. lose most of it. <laughs> Very cool. All right, and uh, Rick, we'll end the introductions with you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, my name's Rick. Um, I'm an am amateur photographer. I really only picked this up about six months ago after I took uh, Trey's HDR course. Um, I'm a full-time IT guy. I travel a lot, as a matter of fact, almost every other week up to Vancouver. Uh, but, yeah, this has opened up a whole new uh, kind of avenue of my life, and I just, I'm just so uh, pumped by it. Just, you know, I can't, every waking minute, I... If I'm not working on it, I'm certainly thinking about it. So that's me in a nutshell. And I live in Florida. All right. Well, thanks, Rick. Um, so I can't wait to share all your photos and stories. And, uh, and if there's time at the end, um, if people have an interest, um, there's been a lot of questions lately about this because I know I was on this great camera bag quest in, uh, in Japan a few days ago. So I've come back with a delicious booty, and I will uh, be happy to share uh, Let's go around and hear um, uh, all these various stories and have uh, picture sharing time. Um, so I already teased yours, Paul. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring up your photo on my screen, and you can kind of uh, tell, your, tell your story. And um, you know, also, you can tell the story of the story, because I think that there were some uh, unintended or interesting side effects, because after you shared your story, it's like it kind of has kept on going. So I think people would like to hear that. Okay, so go ahead, Paul. I guess I'll start at the uh, the beginning. Um, I've always taken photos, but never that seriously, up until uh, I was on uh, my anniversary with my wife in New Zealand. And um, just before that, I stumbled across Stuck in Customs and started getting really interested in HDR. Um, and that was my first main trip in uh, New Zealand when I tried out some HDR photography, um, but also at that point everything just seemed to come together because as you're getting older and I've been dealing with depression for probably most of my life um, and it got to a point where uh, as much as I wanted to be a really good father um, and have a beautiful wife, going to work and coming home was pretty much my life. Um, and trying to spend some time with the kids and you get stuck in this rut and then to have this depression constantly over you it wasn't helping the situation at all and um, having a very very small circle of friends there was really no one I can uh, really turn to and I really didn't understand what was going on as well um, so everything started to fall into place with uh, after, after stumbling into HDR and trying it out and then things just sort of all started to mash together because um, I just needed something that I can call my own and do something for myself. Um, and the depression was always uh, causing me to be, I, I suppose you could say lazy, but have no real uh, aspirations for life. And then starting to do the photography and starting to also use Google Plus to share those uh, photos, all of a sudden everything started to turn around and I had a purpose again. Um, so that was my main uh, 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 thing that I, I gained from it is that other people were feeling the same way and other people started to enjoy my photos and I was really doing it just for myself as a boost um, and for once in my life I actually belonged to something and things just started to all work and I started to meet new people started through mainly through Google Plus as well um, started to go out to photo walks which is something I wouldn't normally do and associate with different people so I'm probably rambling on a little bit but that's essentially the story um, uh, and I'm still working through my depression although in the last uh, two weeks it's been <laughs> Uh, absolutely crazy uh, with that photo going around and it's uh, the other interesting thing is that photo has been sitting there since November and I hadn't processed for whatever reason and then all of a sudden everything again started to fall into place so I needed to tell my story and 
Trey came up with um, this this talk, and I thought it's a good time. And and once again, that piece fell into place. And ever since then, it's just been a, a crazy ride. Well, it's a it's a lovely story, and I uh, I think it probably means a lot to a lot of people because um, you know they get into photography later in life, and and uh, I think it all you know it uncovers things in people that they didn't know were there before. And so uh, it's really nice to hear how it's uh, how it's changed you. So we during the pre-show actually we were talking a little bit, and you said something that struck me, that you know all this very personal story and these photos and everything you put all this on Google Plus, but not on not on Facebook. That's right. And not at all to make this like a Facebook versus Google Plus thing because that's you know sort of takes away from the essence of the story. But I do notice that Google Plus is a place for passions and sort of maybe new friends and things and. Like, maybe, did you not put it on Facebook because it's like old friends and family, or uh, what's what's the thinking there? Because this is actually interesting, the way we share stories nowadays and where you choose to do it. Um, I guess it's, it's um, it was just me be being able to vent out onto Google+, Plus. and Facebook for me is more personal, it's more, more family orientated, and you know, I wasn't ready to really talk about it with the family. This is something that I haven't really shared with anyone else. It's one of those things where sometimes talking to a stranger is easier than talking to a personal friend or a family member. So I kept it aside because I also have this new version of, of me um, that I wanted to express and I didn't want that old baggage to be hanging around and people to see me as that old guy. <laughs> but, and I, I needed to, uh, to share that. I started fresh, and uh, I was overwhelmed with the support. It's just been incredible. Yeah, I know what you mean about the old back. This it's a weird thing. It happens even a little bit to me on on Facebook versus Google Plus too, because you know what I think what happens is uh, as you get older, you change. You're sort of this ever changing river, or at least hopefully you are. And then what happens on Facebook is I have all these old friends or whatever from 10 or 20 years ago, you know, that kind of reconnect. And then, so when you share something very open and vulnerable about yourself, you kind of hesitate before you hit click because you're like, what are all my old friends and family going to think? But really, I think one of the great revelations I've had, maybe just because I've been doing this so long, is that um, I think you just put it all out there and it will self-select a new set of friends for you because if you have older friends that are very judgmental or don't like this new version of you, well, they're not your friends anyway, so forget them. It's a great sort of litmus test for bringing, you know, the kind of people into your life that need to be there. So so anyway, I know this was a very personal thing. Thank you for uh, for sharing it. I think people liked uh, hearing it from, from you too, so thank you, Paul. Yeah, I also did. I didn't necessarily want to be the spokesperson for uh, depression, but I just thought it was important that I'm sure... There's so many people who are going through the same issues and trying to work out a way around it, and that was my way around it. Yeah, I think um, I think it's it's really interesting the way you you said all this because um, I think a lot of people get into photography in different ways, and um, I think there's probably many shades of depression. And people that get into it, they maybe do want something, or they feel like there's something else there in life, and uh, this is a really nice. Uh, window into it, so thanks. Um, all right, so Andrew, you want to go next? By the way, what I'll do is while we're talking here over the chat window, which people can see, is I'll kind of type in who's next, so they're not surprised when I when I call on them. <laughs> like Andrew probably is right now. Andrew, you're next. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, Paul's story is incredible, and uh, it's very interesting, and that's really cool that uh, he share that. And, and to be honest, since reading that, I mean, I can relate to his situation in in uh, in part. The picture I shared is a picture of a boat, and it's on the Sunshine Coast, uh, Vancouver, which is a little ways out of Vancouver. You actually have to take a ferry to get there, and it's a bit of a, a trip and a drive, and then you got to hike down a path to get to the beach. And, and uh, it's outside a friend of mine's house, my buddy. His name is Bro, and he lives on the beach, and he's a magician too. He's a magic hippie. And this is this boat he has that's called the Floozy. And uh, so I... I told, this is the kind of first adventure kind of thing that I went on. I said, I want to travel somewhere and go take a picture of a cool beach. And so I went there and got to his place and uh, saw this magnificent boat. And I thought, you know, this is, this is awesome. 
And um, so we lit a, a fire and cracked some beers and kind of waited for sunset. And of course, you know, the the clouds were terrible. It was all just foggy and, and whatnot. So that's that's what came out. So, But that wasn't the reason that I shared this photo is that it's a magnificent photo or anything. It's kind of, that was actually the very first HDR uh, photo that I took ever on a Sony RX100. And, uh, but it was important. And the reason I kind of shared it is because it kind of marked, I guess, a big corner in my life because... If I rewind time, just before uh, taking the ferry and going there, um, two years ago, I was in a car accident. I was rear-ended uh, by a lady texting, and I, got, I took a can of paint to the back of my head, so I lost most of my vision in my right eye and my right ear, and I, was in, uh, I had a traumatic brain injury. So I was in recovery for about a year, a uh, year and a half. And in that year and a half, I was kind of on the couch, very, very depressed because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a hypnotist, I'm a performer. And so I was on the TV show Mind Freak and living in Las Vegas and working 16 hours a day and doing television and traveling around the world performing and giving talks on uh, all of this stuff to just sitting on my couch for a year and nothing. So all of my, uh, I lost all of my kind of corporate clientele. I used to give talks for Audi and uh, tonight actually is interesting because it's my first time back on stage. In two hours I have a private show for electronic arts uh, here at the Shangri-La so it's like a huge day for me today but uh, so yeah that that year that I was kind of out and actually very depressed I uh, stumbled around on YouTube I too stumbled on a, a Trey Radcliffe video of you can do HDR and uh, after about 20 minutes I, I was Trey kind of convinced me that I could do this and I thought you know I, I want a camera that I can shoot raw and aperture mode and I want to get a tripod and I want to take one of these these pictures these are amazing and it really spoke to me and uh, Thinking about it back now, before I did hypnosis and stuff, I was a hairstylist for 16 years too. So I kind of had this natural aesthetic, and I like to have an eye for things. And, and I thought my whole life has kind of been one big rehearsal to get a camera and try and do this. So um, yeah, I got a Sony RX100 after a little research. Thought this is a good kind of starting point. It looks nice, and I like it. So uh, fast forward back onto the ferry, went to the coast, took this picture of this floozy, and uh, went home and played with the sliders and went into that whole thing which is a whole other amazing you know magical thing and uh, and then I didn't post it anywhere I was just scared to death I said if I put this out there and somebody hates this or likes it, I didn't know it was just such a weird thing to share because you're kind of even though I didn't make the boat I created this image I'm going God is this good is it bad I, I don't even know I have nothing to compare it to I have no prior kind of information to go on so I'm like you just kind of I just dumped it out there I posted it with not my name on it or anything, I just kind of put it on my Facebook page and because the TV show I was on had a lot of fans and people were responding to this picture going, oh wicked, this is cool and they were like interested in it. I'm like, okay, and some guy said you should really put the name of the person who could have credit for the photo, this amazing photo, so I kind of took it down and put my name on it, just Andrew Gerard, and then people were like, did you take this photo? I was kind of like peeking out from behind my thing saying yes, you know, like, oh, it was a weird thing because all these people who had seen me on TV on the show know me as Gerard the Hypnotist for, you know, we had like a 1.4 billion viewers on the show. So I had all these people all of a sudden making this, it was a big corner for me to go, oh, so you're going to do this now. And I'm like, I don't know. I like it a lot. So, yeah, it's a, uh, but it got me up and out and walking around and thinking. So if you've had a brain injury, you know a concussion's a terrible thing to have and, and you can't explain it to anybody. But my multitasking had gone way down. But since I got the camera and learning and having this kind of moving equation of light in my brain and thinking and looking and, and out walking, it, it got me up and walking around for three hours, four hours. So I lost all the weight that I put on sitting on a couch and got my brain back in working order. And it's kind of all kind of come to this point today where tonight I'm going to go back on stage and I'm kind of just getting my life back. So it's uh, in a weird way, you know, photography has been a huge, huge uh, part of uh, that whole last two years of my life. So, um, yeah, it's a, I think it could be an actual therapeutic tool for anybody that's had a concussion or been in any kind of brain injury. It's an, it's an amazing thing. So I'll breathe now. <sighs> <laughs> no, you did it in a very, very nice way. Yeah, bravo. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, it's interesting, isn't it, what photography does to you? You kind of think, oh, I'm just going to take pictures and maybe share a few. You don't really think it'll do anything to you, but it, it does. Because I think, actually, that photography is one of the greatest self-discovery tools of our age. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you have these layers within yourself. Maybe you're sort of like a, a multifaceted Cinnabon. 
And what happens is that you don't even know you have this stuff down inside of you. And then as you process photos, you're like, oh, what do I like to take photos of? Do I like people or do I like street photography? Do I like landscapes or what do I or flowers or whatever it is? And then you take those and you process them. And then you're like, well, I don't really know how to process it. I don't know what I like. So you just try a bunch of stuff. But over time, something sticks. And then you start to you start to uncover this layer within yourself through this process. Mm -hmm. So it's incredibly personal, and it's always uh, full of these personal revelations about you. It's uh, it's a fantastic tool for self discovery. It sounds like you found that out too, Andrew. Absolutely, you know, and it's from, I mean, when you when you're on, in TV, you're in show business, as you know, and you put yourself out there. You can't. You have to have thick skin. You can't really. I mean, you should care about how good what you're doing is to yourself and hold yourself to high standards, but inevitably you can't please everybody and people have tastes and whatnot, so at the end of the day, you just kind of learn that the best thing you can do is just put yourself out there as honest as you can to yourself and as, 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 long, as, you are, as long as you are feeling that whatever you're doing is, is true to yourself, you can never go wrong. I think that's fine. Some people like it, hate it, whatever, but it is a very exposing, it, it makes you vulnerable, it makes you really think about what you like and because today you know most people I always say most people don't like what they like people like what they think other people like as many people click like or things they're kind of guided and pushed and it's so you know maybe it's because I'm a hypnotist but I know about influence so much and so I think if you give someone a blank canvas and say here what do you like what do you want to say it's all you press point it anywhere press it anything and slide it's up to you you're people like uh, I don't know who I am you know I, so you really it kind of forces you to go you know, okay, what do I like? What do I really want to say? This is what I think is good. You know, so it's a definitely a, it's a love-hate relationship because, I mean, I've taken thousands of terrible photos too. Oh, I'm probably the worst, you know, so, but nobody sees that. Yeah. yeah, that's also an interesting phenomenon that you mentioned. I mean, you mentioned many interesting things that we could go off on tangential conversations about, but one of them is this idea that uh, you know, you start sharing photos, and then all your old friends or whatever, they like, like, did you take this photo? And then I hear this all the time. Uh, you know, I experienced it back in the day, too. Really? Um, well. Because there's this trick, you know, well, you know, like, if you just do a little bit of post-processing, and there's so many amazing post-processing tools out there, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, there's all these weird tools that I use that I recommend on the website, but there's also, like, very commonly available tools, like all the the stuff that Google is incorporating in with uh, Nick software and then I think people get a little taste of it too even with Instagram they go like oh I could take a photo and make it more interesting and just like adding a little filter is putting a little bit of your personality on there and maybe that's sort of a step one but there's so many steps even beyond that that's just sort of an amuse bouche I think I think it's gonna go I think people are gonna get this and they're gonna figure out how uh, creative and interesting um, these layers within them are well it's interesting the correlation between kind of magic or illusion and this is because if you're a magician and you watch me do a trick you don't know necessarily how I did it you'd know how you would do it but you'll never truly know how I did it unless I tell you and I can look at your photo and say oh I think oh, this is how he did this gradient this is maybe the clarity of this but I'm not sure unless you tell me what you did I'll never really know I can just kind of do what my version of it is so there is some kind of secretive things going on I think as well with photographers and their post processing and their tricks and their you know I understand if you want to talk about it, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. That's it's, what uh, uh, we'll move on to Jesse here next, but I'll just speak to that real quick. You know, I uh, from the beginning uh, when I started the blog like eight years ago or whatever, I would share the photos and all the techniques behind them because there's certain people out there. It's interesting that you're into the, the magical arts, but the idea is that. Um, you know, it takes a special kind of brain to appreciate the magic trick itself. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they say, well, when you learn all the steps of the magic trick, it's no longer very interesting. But that's not true because if you have the right kind of brain, they can appreciate all the little spoon bites it took to eat the elephant, and you can appreciate eating the whole elephant. If you can do both of these things, you know, this is a very nice mindset to be in. And so uh, I think we all figure this out slowly through photography. Okay. So, uh, Jesse, you're next. Um, I'll, again, share my screen. I'll pull up your photo. and So I'll, I'll share your photo and also like look at your profile and some other stuff you've done while you're talking. Okay, so go, Jesse. Okay, well, very cool. I, I don't know. I have a pretty, a pretty hard couple of acts to follow there uh, with Andrew and Paul. Both of you guys had such compelling stories, such, such you know, emotional uh, stories that brought you to photography. Um, I'm a little bit different. 
uh, back in 2010, uh, I saw a photo online uh, of the Milky Way, which which I thought was, of course, a, a fake, a, a fraud. You know, how, how is it possible to take a, a photo of the galaxy with the landscape with, with the standard DSLR? When, in fact, I realized that it was not a fake, it wasn't a fraud. It was actually possible. And when I made that realization, I, I kind of made it my, my objective in all of my free time to learn how to do that to the, the best of my capabilities. So... Uh, um, I've researched, I, I, I researched techniques, I researched post-processing techniques and uh, searched, for, searched for places where I could, could travel and kind of create otherworldly scenes out of locations on Earth. Um, why am I doing this? What's the impetus behind it? I, I, I kind of want to encourage people uh, to, to get out on the weekends and experience nature, experience a, a, a night sky miles away from light pollution, uh, uh, see it for themselves because in, in my opinion that's the that's the best best time a, a person or a couple people can 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 enjoy you know I have a great time doing it if I'm, I'm by myself uh, the photo that's uh, being shared right now is of Palouse Falls in, uh, in Washington um, I, I saw a couple photos of this place and uh, um, realized I had to go up here to photograph it so uh, I found good, uh, a reasonably priced airfare, hopped on a plane from Florida to Washington State, rented a little car, drove in the middle of nowhere, and uh, uh, stood on the side of that cliff to, to take this photo. And, and you know, be, actually being there in such a magnificent and awe-inspiring place is really, really a humbling experience. Um, a little technical detail behind the photo, um, it's a... a combination of two panoramic images. Uh, both panoramas are five photos going from right to left, uh, taken a couple hours after, uh, one, one at just after sunset and then one a couple hours later at um, about 11, 11 p.m. Sunset's pretty late up there. Uh, I don't, a lot of my HDR uh, uh, blending I, I do by hand in, in Photoshop and I have to give a huge shout out to Google with the Nick collection. You guys make my life really easy when it comes to <laughs> post-processing photos compared to uh, uh, using actions I've developed in, in Photoshop. So uh, uh, you know, big, uh, a big thank you to uh, uh, Google and uh, Nick collection for that. Uh, if, if you guys are photographers watching this, I, I highly recommend using their tools whenever I, I lead workshops. I always uh, I recommend for the participants to pick up uh, a Nick collection offered by Google and, and really use the tools. I, I, I use it as an integral part in all my workflow. Well, um, photography's personally been, been very important to me um, for, for some time now. Uh, I really like just showcasing, showcasing the natural world to the best of my ability and, and showing, uh, 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 showing the, the night sky in places that people view as familiar. Um, I, was, uh, I was actually uh, brought to Google Plus by uh, uh, seeing some of uh, Trey's work elsewhere. Uh, on the internet, uh, people are a lot nicer on uh, on Google Plus than they are in, in several other places online, and it's very a uh, very good uh, very good community. Um, notice some 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 of my shots scrolling by on the uh, uh, side, and I'll, I'll be happy to uh, talk some more about uh, the nitty nitty gritty of, of the images if we have a, a chance to do that at all um, in the time for this broadcast. I yeah, guess that's these, about um, it for me. These photos are crazy, man. Um, mm. I'm sure people are seeing those and thinking, whoa, that is uh, wild. But uh, So it seems, what, what made you um, get more into night photography than other kinds of photography? Um, I want to present familiar, familiar places um, with, with kind of a, a twist. Uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of people are even now, after after night photography has uh, uh, been on the upward swing for a while, unaware that uh, uh, it's it's possible to capture the, the Milky Way uh, uh, with landscape photography, and it's just been something that's really really captivated me. Um, I try to do I I really try to discipline myself to do half nighttime photography and half daytime photography just to kind of have a, a sense of balance, but uh, but it's just. It's just I have a very obsessive kind of personality, and and I just I just want to get as many interesting places as I can, and and capture them in the most surreal way way possible. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I also liked there was this little part of your story which you probably just threw in there, but you didn't 
you probably wondered why you put it in there afterwards. But then there, there's this process where you talk about flying in and like renting a car and driving. And this is actually, people don't know all this stuff unless you do this sort of thing. But uh, do you find this like, because I do this kind of stuff all the time. Like I fly to some weird airport and then I yeah. go through all the trouble of renting a car and it's always different, you know. And then you, you got to get in the car and you got to like stop at the store and get a few snacks or something because you don't know how late you're going to be out and you end up getting weird food. And so, anyway, it's just like <laughs> everything is like uncomfortable because you're going through this weird stuff and you're going through so much trouble. I mean, packing and and uh, uh, going to these little stores, getting these, and then you actually finally get to the location. And then, like while you're driving, you're thinking. What is all this nonsense I'm doing? Like my my my, I've spent so many days of nonsense, just with logistical uh, ridiculousness, getting into this location, and then you finally get there, and then you take the shot, and you're like, oh, okay, now now I know why I do it. Yeah, yeah, Trey, I, I know you do a lot of traveling, and, and I think something that I have to my advantage is that when I after I graduated from a university, I spent two years living out of a backpack in uh, Australia, uh, Southeast Asia, um, Europe. Uh, all over. Basically, I, I, I traveled all over, so I, I live for it. You know, when I when I get in that rental car with a with a, a crisp Red Bull or other highly caffeinated be beverage and uh, uh, some beef jerky or whatever, or I, I'm at I'm in my element. So I yeah. really uh, I, I really I really live for that. No, I dig it. Uh, Red Bull isn't my thing. I think we all have our little routines when we're in these little car trips. I like so I like having a little bit of chocolate. You know. And there's different chocolate all around the world, and I've got this one problem always in Iceland, uh, <laughs> because everything is like in this crazy language that only dolphins can speak. And so when you go into the store, there looks like all this chocolate. But my one pet peeve is licorice, and for whatever reason, in every Icelandic chocolate thing I've gotten, they've always included licorice somehow, <laughs> like it's in the middle or it's on the outside, or there's like a shell, and there's just no way around it. So I'm always so excited. Uh, but I always get ripped off in the end because of this Icelandic licorice um, fetish. Oh, I they would have. love to shoot there. I would love to shoot in Iceland. <laughs> I bet you go. I bet you go crazy there. Um, <laughs> when I see night photography like yours, it makes me want to get out there and do more, more night photography. I just, I just dabble in it. But I see guys like you, and I think, whoa, that is pretty hardcore. Yeah, very cool. Well, thanks for all the photos and thanks for the story. All right, so uh, Rick, uh, you want to go next? Sure. Um... What photo are we talking about? I, I posted a couple. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's we'll figure it out together. Okay, here I'll share this. I'll share my screen. So I think this is the one that uh, that I saw here. Okay, sharing my is screen. This, was this the one by the beach? It was uh, this one, Coquina Beach. Ah, yeah, 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 yes. yeah, down in Florida. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, the the story about this. I, as I do with a lot of mine, I write uh, like a paragraph or so on my web page, on my blog, and then what I do is I try to condense it uh, on Google+, Plus and rather than write a long story. Um, and that's just kind of a habit, because I figure most people are just kind of scanning and they're not going to read it anyway. Um, but the full story behind this is it's a very cool beach. It's a very popular beach close to where I live. And, um, but it's, unfortunately, it's a very dangerous beach. And uh, I'm sad to say that, you know, a couple of people have been lost because they just wa wade into the waters. Um, and they dro it drops off and the current is really, really tough. Uh, so anyway, I went back there a couple of nights ago. And now I shot this picture uh, a couple of months ago, but I, w I went back there a couple of nights ago to shoot it. Uh, from a different angle and whatever, and on my way back, uh, I noticed a bunch of people remarking about the dolphins. And um, sure enough, uh, just off, off the, you know, just a few feet away from me, are this pod of dolphins just frolicking in the waters. And it just, it's so amazing to be just sitting there in the presence of these dolphins. And and because the water is so deep and so close, uh, they they love it. And you're just a few feet away. So that was kind of the story behind that, and um, you know, and and it makes you it makes you appreciate that you know we're not the only intelligence here, and there's the animals are just uh, you know I think a lot of times we don't give the animals enough credit for you know who they are and what they are, and anyway that 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 was the story behind it, even though there's no dolphins in the photo. 
I do like how uh, dolphins are always frolicking. They seem to spend like 95% of their lives frolicking, don't they? They do. They do. Yeah. And they're so fun to watch. And, um, uh, it's like they don't and, do any and actual they... work. They just, they just frolic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think in my next life I want to be a dolphin. That's for sure. Yeah. Hey, man, this photo is cool. Uh, up here, uh, what, is, uh, what, what was going this, on here? Okay, so actually I, I, this photo... Um, we went out with our uh, next door neighbors, um, and uh, we went out for dinner. And on our way back, we said, "Hey, let's you know stop by someplace and you know look at the water." And um, I didn't have my camera with me. And then all of a sudden, we got this amazing sunset. And when I say amazing, I mean if I can rate all the sunsets I've ever seen, most of them are you know the good ones are in the seven, but this one was up like nine point five. It was so amazing, but I didn't have my camera. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm just kicking myself, wishing I had my... But then I, I realized, hey, I have my iPhone. So I pull out my iPhone, and I start clicking away. And, uh, and then I bring it back, and I, I forget about it, and I go back, and I, I'll go to process it a couple of days later. And I just start blurring blurring it, you know, uh, doing a motion blur, because I just I love the colors. And so that's actually just an iPhone shot. Uh, yeah, I have you know a, a DSLR and all the stuff that you recommend on your site, but that one is one of my favorite photos, and it was taken with an iPhone. And in the end, I realized, you know, I didn't really need to be too concerned about it. it, it, it I, if you have even an iPhone, you can cat, you can do something that's pleasing, and, and that to me was pleasing even just to myself. Yeah, that is crazy. I, that's an iPhone shot. I had no idea. I thought, man. I bet, like, no one can believe that's an iPhone shot. It's yeah, that is. Man. That's exactly an iPhone shot. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's cool. and those are the true colors that we were looking at that night. We were all just kind of standing there with our mouth agape, thinking, "Is this true? I mean, have we died and gone to heaven, or what?" So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Um, all right, thank you for that. So, uh, Guy, do you want to go next? Oh, thanks, Trey, and. Uh, yeah, the, the photo uh, that I shared and the story was uh, I first did uh, photography at college and uh, that was uh, black and white photography. I had my own uh, dark room at home and I took over my bedroom and had all the chemicals in my wardrobe and I really enjoyed uh, that black and white uh, photography. But I got into a career in IT and I uh, had family and I moved away from photography. One of the reasons is that um, I'm colorblind, uh, which a lot of males are, and uh, so fashion photography, I just didn't feel that I, you know, I, I, I could really you know, have a career. Uh, so I, I, dropped, I dropped it away, and now uh, the story I tell in this photo, which is, it's a marine park, uh, just, it's called Goat Island, um, it's just a, a kilometre from uh, where we holiday, in a holiday house just north of Auckland and Lee. And in 1975, it was the first marine park uh, in New Zealand. So it's a beautiful spot. All the fish have come back. In the summer, there's thousands of people learning to scuba dive and things. But I, I love um, living by the water. And uh, I used to surf and boat, and I still yacht. And the story about a year or so ago, I was thinking, I, I need a hobby. Um, I play golf. I play a little bit of sport. But I really needed something for me um, because I'm, I'm heading towards retirement. And I thought, well, why don't I try you know, this photography again? And I was looking on the web, uh, came across uh, some of Trey's work, and uh, he had a lot of water shots and uh, coastal shots. And that really appealed to me. So I got out my little Sony uh, 5 meg uh, point and shoot, and I went around and I took a few photos and then uh, found uh, photomatics and I did a bit of you know, uh, HDR manually um, and then realized as I got into it that I needed a little bit better camera. But my view on education all my life is, is you self-educate um, and Google and, and the web is just fantastic for you know, educating yourself. So I thought I'm not going to spend any money. No, I I want to test this hobby and just see how passionate I am. 
And so I found Google Plus. I'd never, uh, I wasn't on Facebook. Uh, my son suggested I try Google Plus. Um, I found the photography and I started to really learn about uh, well, what they call HDR photography. And another of my frustrations as a photographer when I was young is that New Zealand has incredible light, Trey, you know, and uh, very bright light and high dynamic range. And if you're at the coast, uh, uh, shooting with a standard 35 mil film, an ill filled film, you just can't, you just cannot get that light into the photo. And I saw that here's a chance, here's a way by using HDR, by combining you know two or three photos, you could get all the light in, in a single location. And that's and that was that was the trigger for me to to get back into photography. So I progressed a little bit, and uh, looking around, I I decided I wanted a lightweight camera, uh, wanted to be travelling, and I'd focus on photographing my local area. When you go into Google Plus uh, and you see these beautiful photos by people you know, like Jesse, that you know, incredible locations uh, all around the world, you tend to think, well, I can only be a, photogra a photographer if I can travel. That's not true. No. The area you know the best is the area that you live in. And you know when the sun rises, you know in which way the wind blows, you know uh, how the water moves. And that passion, if you just focus initially on your local area, whether you live in the desert you know, and you've got great skies, or whether you live in the water at the coast like I do and you've got great sea that changes every day, just focus, just start. You know, start in this area by photographing your local area. Street photography, in the city photography, it doesn't matter. Macro photography, bugs, just, just start where you have a passion. And start with whatever technology you've got. And if you like it, you take steps forward. So coming back to the shell, the, the Goat Island, a, a sculpture, put a, uh, a bronze sculpture on the rocks uh, about 30 years ago after it was made in Marine Park. And I'd all, 30 odd years ago, I wanted to photograph that, that, uh, that sculpture. Um, and then I bought my Sony NEX6, uh, thanks Trey. Uh, I, I learned how to uh, process uh, multiple uh, shots. But one of the things, Trey, that you don't tell people, um, or you do, but you didn't tell at the beginning, is that when you're photographing water, you can use HDR, but often, in a shot like this, you need to catch a single shot because of the spray. And one of the things by taking multiple right. exposures, then what I found here is that this is actually a single exposure and it's at minus three uh, EV. So just to talk technical, but it, it's... And the magic of that shot is that the shell actually, you know, uh, uh, is it dodges the, the sun. And so it, it just happened by magic, really, that, that, that shot. There's very little post-processing in it. Um, it's, it's, I processed in RAW. I did aperture uh, exposure. As, uh, and that's, that's the other thing. Once you start to process high dynamic range, process in RAW and aperture, two things I learned from Trey, and those, that's just the way to start. And that's, that's it all. It's a, it's, a, it's a single shot. Um, I knew the area, I knew that the sun, it's, it's actually on the east coast of, of New Zealand. So the sun, of course, rises, sinks in the west. So to get a sunset shot on the, on the east coast, uh, you, you know, you have to be pretty lucky. And, and here I knew that this location, uh, the bay curved around, and, and so that I, you know, I could get an east coast sunset. And I also knew, because I knew the area, you know, that what the tides were, and uh, I went down this afternoon to thinking I might get a few shots at Goat Island, and I went in the winter because it's so busy in the summer, so there's nobody around when I took this, this photo. And, um, and then the light, the sky was blue, completely blue. There wasn't a cloud, and this was about an hour before sunset, so I was just taking water shots and other shots, and then a little bit of cloud came in, and that's another thing I find is I don't know what happens at sunrise and sunset, but cloud magically appears and then magically disappears. Mm. And if you just are there and you stay for an hour or two hours and just take shots, just magic happens. 
And, uh, and that magic is, is what I love doing as a photographer. And just to, so that's a little bit about the photography, but just to talk a little bit about Google Plus, because that's a real element of, of why I've now become so passionate and why I love my photography. Um, the knowledge that you get from the people that you see here, the knowledge you know, of Google Plus is just absolutely, you know, everybody shares, everybody is honest, um, nobody is negative, and, uh, and when you share a photo, the reason I share a photo is because the photographers that I follow bothered to share their photos. They bothered to think that somebody like me could be of interest. And so I see followers not as something to brag about, but somebody in the, that's following in Google Plus has just chosen for a moment in their life to include my photos you know, in their journey. And if anybody does that, then that's just a fantastic story for me. And that's why I do what I do. Yeah, that's a very nice way to say it. And it's a nice story, too. Um, you know, while I was looking at your photo, let me uh, re-screen share it. I know this. Um, that it has, that look at it, it has 208,000 views. Crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. And doesn't, it, doesn't it feel weird? Because I know, like, I, oh, I certainly weird. feel like this down here because it's so much more remote down here in New Zealand and the idea that uh, it doesn't even matter where you are but really if you're sort of a citizen of the world then you're then you're on the internet you know? absolutely and I think I mean I really do encourage people to, to start with their local area because when, when you look at these great photos they are off-putting and you think well I can never aspire I can never achieve you know, but there's just some of the stories you hear it's you just start like any journey, you start where you are. You know, it may not be the best place to start, but if that's where you are, that's where you started. Yeah, I dig it. I dig it. All right, um, Danny, you're next. Okay, so the photo that you're putting up is it the one of Charles Bridge? Let me see. You got to figure uh, that. Out. Okay. Photo and I wanted to say while you're looking, and I know you said I don't have to say it, but I really appreciate all your instruction and the videos it's really helped me to be a way better photographer and uh, yeah so oh, thank well, you thanks. for that Trey. Well you don't so, have to thank me I think it goes back actually to uh, what Guy just said is that um, you know you just kind of share for the sake of sharing and the idea that other people see it and appreciate it it's it's magical so there's sort of like this circle of love that goes around and it's not a uh, mm -hmm. I know that sounds very new age or zen or whatever but it's true yeah. and there's there's this um, idea there's sort of like this economy of uh, attention and sharing and art that's different from every other economy we know. Like we're maybe used to certain economies being like some, some sort of a zero-sum game or something and in order for someone else to succeed, someone else has to not succeed or you know, there's a finite amount of X out there and if one person gets a certain amount of X, someone else has less X. But it's not like that with art and photography and sharing. Uh, we all get better together. And I, I notice the more the more mojo I put into it, uh, the more mojo I get back. And I think it's probably the same with all of us here. So once you realize that, that's sort of another great secret of internet sharing artistic life. Um, so go on. I'll try to pull up your photo while while you're talking. Okay. So um, I went about two and a half months ago. I went uh, on a trip to the Czech Republic because I used to live there for 11 years. And uh, my wife is Czech, and I have twin daughters that were born in Czech. And so we went back to visit the family. I haven't been there. My twins are 11 now. We left when we were when they were one. So I haven't been back. You know, her parents haven't seen my my twins since for the last 10 years, and they never saw my youngest child. So we had to go back. And so I'm all excited about you know getting back to check now that I have my new HDR uh, skills and pro post processing skills. And I thought like this is going to be awesome because check is awesome. By the way, if you've never been there. I really highly recommend going there and Prague. I think oh, there's the shot there. Um, I mean, everything is like from the 14th or 15th century build. So everywhere you look is an interesting shot that you can get, and uh, it's an awesome place to get a lot of photos. I got maybe a thousand photos while I was there. But anyway, um, so really quick, I guess the night before we left, about eight o'clock at night, I'm getting all my my stuff ready and uh, I got all my, my new bag and all my camera equipment in there and I'm like you know what it's probably a good idea if I 
clean the sensor of my camera before this trip to get all these awesome photos. So I like, and I had a 5D Mark II at that point, and so I open it up and I take the sensor swab, and I'm like <laughs> wiping the sensor back and forth, and I don't know why or what happened, but the the shutter closes while I'm swabbing the sensor, and I never I did it like once before only um, cleaning the sensor, but I thought oh I have to do it for this trip. So uh, it, the shutter closes with that cleaning swab in there on the sensor and just totally destroyed the camera. And it was literally like 8 o'clock at night and we're leaving at, I don't know, 4 or 5 in the morning the next morning. So I was pretty devastated. I don't know if that ever happened to anybody else before a big trip that you're planning, you know, and you're like, I got all my stuff ready to go to get all these awesome shots. But uh, luckily, I got off the plane in Prague drove straight to a camera shop in Prague and updated to a new uh, Canon 5D Mark III. It was an expensive accident, but it was still, uh, it was nice to have a new camera there. So, yeah, I got in check. I, I was there for three weeks. It was just the last maybe, I think we were there for two or three days in Prague, the last three days uh, before we flew back to come back. And, uh, again, I lived in Czech for 11 years, so I've been to Prague a hundred times Take, you know, picking people up at the airport, dropping them off, to, you know, showing them around Prague. And Prague is awesome and beautiful, but there's always a million people, like on the bridge. That, that shot was Charles Bridge. There's always, I don't know, probably 2,000 people on the bridge at, at every moment. And, uh, and it's still awesome in the daytime. There's so many beautiful things you can see there. And, uh, and I got a lot of nice daytime shots as well, I think, the ones that I like. But... Um, I remember that shot uh, was at night, and we were staying in a, an apartment just at the end of Charles Bridge. So, uh, and there was even at like ten at night when we were still out there, there was still you know the bridge was totally crowded with at least a couple hundred people at that point. And so we went back to the apartment. My wife and the kids went to sleep, and uh, I thought, well, I'm going to go back out there now because you know there's not all the tourists and everybody else is sleeping. So I went out maybe like one in the morning, walked around Prague. Uh, and it's just awesome when you're, you know, when there's when the city's sleeping basically, and you're walking around, and there's just a few people walking here and there, and you're in this like historical place. It was just a really cool uh, feeling to walk around, and I've never done that, even though I've been on, you know, in Prague many times. So uh, that shot, I was just setting up my tripod and. Uh, seem like, oh, that's a good shot there. There's nobody on the bridge. There's actually, in that picture, there's actually um, like a couple leaning there, uh, like kissing each other over the edge. Um, I didn't even see that picture until I was processing it later. I mean, I didn't see that they were standing there. So I thought that was kind of a nice bonus to add to the the, the mood or the feeling of the picture. And, and like in that photo, what I've, at least me personally, I love HDR, and when I first started, you know, when I first watched your videos, I was like, man, look how perfect I can make this scene look, and, you know, all the colors and how vivid it looks, and uh, and I love those photos. I even won a cruise for one of the very first HDR uh, photos I took, and, and again, it was uh, inspired by one of your photos, Trey, and definitely by your uh, the videos, but um, now I think... I've come to like that when you're post-processing, not making everything perfect, you know, and, and, you know, masking in, you know, more lighting here that, that you got on one of the exposures and less lighting here and leaving in some of the flares and adding some maybe vignettes just to give it a little more feeling. So that's what I'm trying to do now with a lot more of my photos is uh, make it a little bit more, to me, interesting. But that's what that photo was about there. Yeah, well, uh, I agree. It's a lovely photo, and I'm glad you appreciate the magic of all this, too. We're actually working on a, a new HDR tutorial series to bring sure it's all updated and have all the latest tricks. And I'm also interested in this idea you're talking about of leaving um, little mysteries in the photo. Um, something Renoir said about all of his paintings. He put little mysterious, purposeful mistakes in there because it makes people wonder more. And I... Sometimes, like you guys, are, you, see, you may see photos that are like too perfect. They're like so like literal and perfect that they are they're a nice uh, exercise in perfection, but sometimes uh, some of the art is lost in some ways. And that's one of the weird struggles with today's technology is because the cameras are so good 
and the post processing is so good. Uh, you can work a photo until it is like um, quintessentially uh, perfection. Uh, but then, unusually, at some point, something is lost in that translation. And it's uh, it's a vague thing, but uh, I guess you know it when you see it. Um, all right, well, thanks for that story. That was cool. Um, uh, does anyone have any more big questions before we tie it up and uh, with a little bow on the end? What's I have the a question. in New Zealand. <laughs> well, what was that? Oh, I was just wondering, how cold is it in New Zealand? Oh, it's not. People always think it's like terribly cold. You know, there's that that one scene, you know, that amazing scene in the beginning of the the second Lord of the Rings movie, and uh, remember uh, Gandalf had just you know dived down with the Balrog. You know, it's very tricky, by the way, that he sent the rest of the Fellowship away so that he could just kill the Balrog and steal all the XP for himself. It's a very uh, a bold move by Gandalf there. But anyway, in the beginning of the the scene is outside of the mountain in the in the second movie, and uh, it's all it's all snowy and super cold, and people think, oh wow, it's like hardcore Antarctica there. But it's not. Um, I'm even way down here in the south, and it's extremely temperate. Like it's a nice spring morning. It's probably um, I don't know about 60 degrees, and it's cool. Oh, nice. And it'll get up into probably uh, the high 60s or 70s today, and just sunny and it's nice. I mean, there's a few cold spells in the winter when it snows. Uh, but I'm down in the valley. Uh, there, there's a valley here in Queenstown, between Queenstown and Arrowtown. And um, uh, it's uh, quite low. Uh, but like 10 minutes away uh, from my house are all the ski slopes. So it like dumps snow up there. So it's all snowy up there. And it's all like green and pastoral down here. It's like it's like the sound of music. Uh, so it's not that bad. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Trey, I, I have a question for you. You live sure. in New Zealand. You, you live in New Zealand, a beautiful place. You take photos all the time. You travel to different locations. You have the best job on earth, or so it seems. How does a, uh, how, how does a lowly chap like me uh, uh, make the right moves to get to where you are um, through, through photography and through online media? Yes, well, I'm, I think... As far as I can tell, I'm sort of an anomaly, um, and so I don't, you know, I don't really put out any like uh, uh, businessy ebooks or videos like how to get rich with photography or that sort of thing because I don't want to be like that guy, you know. But I, I do think actually, you know, Andrew was saying that he's a hypnotist. He does all this magic type stuff, and he also does photography. Um, it's actually so uh, hard to uh, make a full life out of just photography um, that I don't really recommend it to people actually because really the most surefire way to make steady money with photography is to have clients and when you which is a fine way to do it if you have a client based uh, photography life where you're you know you're trying to convince people to pay you to take a photo um, that's that's fine but then that becomes very um, uh, dominating thing in your life because you're always worried about the next client. You might just be two weeks or two months away from not having, so you have to always keep that. You know, it's like when, when a YouTube video is loading, how it's just loading while you're watching it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're going down a train track and you're laying down the rails as you're going. So that can become sort of an obsessive uh, thing that can sort of take away from the freedom of photography. Um, so like Andrew does, it's actually really cool if you could make your money doing something else because uh, you can have multiple lives nowadays, you know, in the olden days you just had sort of one life and one job until you got some sort of pension at the end. It's not like that anymore. Now I think you can do many things with your clever mind and if you could find a way to maybe get that online and um, uh, so that it doesn't matter where you are so you can move to a, a location like New Zealand. I'm slowly bringing all my friends over here by the way. <laughs> I'm going to fill up the area with other photographers like me that uh, maybe they do other things. They make their money in other ways on the internet. It doesn't matter where they live. It's certainly the direction that everything is going. Um, so you know, maybe this is the kind of uh, life. I think it's the kind of life that any everyone can find. Although that doesn't mean you have to make your uh, your money in the in the photography world. You can do it in another right, way. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And it's true. Kind of. You don't have to be a professional photographer to be a great photographer. I mean, you could have a whole other 
kind of career and one supports the other and then eventually if something clicks perhaps then you can think about maybe making that move too, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So yes. I, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning a camera bag. I know you've downsized your cameras and so on and I have just a little uh, uh, Ultrabook computer which I use and my little Sony NEX. So what do you, when you've got that sort of technology, what sort of camera bag do you need? Yes, so I'm, I'm going through uh, a major transitional point in my life when it comes to camera bags, sort of a midlife camera bag crisis. And so, you know, forever I've had these giant DSLRs, big Nikon D3X, D2X, and all this, these big full-frame cameras. And um, I have switched recently to using these much smaller Sony NEX cameras. Um, I have a big post if people want to find out more about why I made these choices. Uh, because you guys know what it's like. You go to these locations, you may only get there once. You want to make sure you have the best equipment to get the job done. And so I wouldn't settle for anything, you know, um, that is less uh, just because it's it's smaller or anything like that. But, like, for example, the Sony NEX camera is, like, six times smaller than my D3X um, which is insane. Wow. And so uh, once I made this this major change in my life, probably about six months ago or so, I realized that I still have all these giant bags, you know, these big low pro or f-stop bags, all these pockets. You know, I feel like some sort of medieval apothecary with a big cart that I go around. So it's it's insane, I realized, to carry in these big bags because I have all these extra pockets. I think, oh, I can put a little, you know, I could put some lens cloths in that pocket, you know. But then I realized I got this big pocket inside there and they're just like like only three percent of it is full with little lens cloths and then I look in some of the other ones and they're only like a little and then I realize I'm carrying on mostly air with all this velcro and nonsense I think what am I doing so I need a new uh, bag situation this was my big side quest I gave myself in uh, in the MMO land of Japan so these are the two bags I came away with and I always um, equate this to women going out uh, shoe shopping and I think that's why I got two bags, and I think this is why women come back with two pairs of shoes because you just can't decide. So you get both. But I'll show you my two bags of my two pairs of shoes here. Okay, so um, this is one of them. Okay, and let me put it by my human head so you can see. So now the unbelievable thing about this bag is that even though it looks small and svelte, it's actually big enough to hold my Sony NEX7 and um, two other lenses. All right, which is not bad, right? So when it, you go out to shoot, right? This is sort of my ba main bag that I throw, I throw over my shoulder, and it's uh, it's nice. It's got uh, lots of zippers and all kinds of stuff. It's got this little thing in here. I keep my um, my tablet, um, so it's very convenient because every now and then I get myself into photo situations where people are saying, "No, you can't take a photo of this or that." So I say, "Oh, but I." Beg, I beg to differ, and I, I pull out my, this, and I show them photos that I take, and I go like, oh, well, maybe you can come in. So this has got me probably wow. into a lot of locked doors, because when they see that you're serious about it, and you're I just like, oh, I'm just a blogger, I'm just a, and I'll give you the photos, and you're just cool, you know, you just show them the stuff, and they see like, oh, okay, well, this is a regular guy, so you can have a nice little personal moment. So anyway, that's that, and uh, yeah, man, I love it. It's a, it's a simple bag. Um, it's easy to unzip. Um, I'll show you the brand here in a second. Um, but it's got all kinds of you know little pockets and stuff inside, um, and so it's made. I don't actually know anything about this company, but my plan is actually I want to contact them to see if they want to make a special bag for me because there's a few little improvements I want. Um, it's this brand called uh, uh, Bianchi or Bianchi. I guess they're uh, Italian from the little flag there, uh, but it's very nice, so I can fit everything in here. But now here's the reason I bought the second bag is because I understand that Sony is releasing something in like the next two or three weeks. Um, no one knows what it is for sure. There's all these rumors that are out there. Um, I don't know anything. And I don't know whether the camera's going to be a little bigger than the NEX or a little smaller. And so what do I... This is the problem that women don't have with shoes is their feet are not always changing size. Um, so this is the problem that I have. Uh, so I got... I got, a, I got a second bag, 
a one that's also a little bit bigger, uh, but it's by the same it's by the same company because I think that they uh, they're quite stylish and cool. I don't you know I could get the old black bag, but I think I just wanted something just that feels a little bit better. I'm more excited to open and I like all the weird pockets and and uh, so this is basically the same kind of bag you just saw, but it's a little bigger so it can hold a, a bigger system in case that's what Sony comes out with next. Plus, I'll just have a little bit more flexibility. So this is that, that same brand, um, Bianchi or Bianchi. Okay, that's my quick little... I'll, make a, I'll also endeavor to make a, a video that shows, like, what pockets do I use and what lenses do I use. <laughs> people always like to see that. Can that's I ask a whole one more show. question? Yeah. You, uh, yeah. You've downsized your camera and you've downsized your bag, but what are you doing with your tripod? Ah, yes, yeah, so uh, I still have the same tripod, but I have a smaller head. So I use a, a really right stuff tripod. It's, uh, it is quite big and robust. Um, uh, the head, I got a much smaller head though, because I don't need that giant multi-pound head to hold a big DSLR. So, um, yeah, a lot of people actually, we had this really fun Google Plus photo walk in Tokyo, and they came up to look at my tripod. They were surprised it was so big. But actually, I still like that it's big and quite sturdy because um, I find that the sturdiness helps in inclement wind conditions uh, more than it does to hold up. And I don't need that, that power to hold up the little NEX. I mostly need that power so that the tripod is braced in, uh, in windy situations. And uh, it's actually that really right stuff tripod. They are they're ridiculously expensive, but they are they're light and they feel good in your hand. And, and uh, yeah, so I still have the same tripod. Yeah. I hate I hate to interrupt, but I see I'm on two percent power in my little MacBook in the hotel. They've let me use right. the bank room, and, and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna probably disappear like magic uh, any second. <laughs> so apologies in advance. It's great right, to man, hear from you. With your uh, EA show, maybe they'll give you a few uh, few games as a, as a part. I feel of so ride. bad, you know. I, I just talked to them, uh, the vice president of the company this morning, and I was congratulating because I don't play any video games at all. So I'm talking about the new uh, Grand Theft 4. He goes, "Oh yeah, yeah." And I go on, and of course, it's not their game. So he's telling me about. <laughs> so he's like, "I'm getting you." He's having a box sent with every EA game and a, a, a whatever an Xbox or something to my hotel room now, so I'm going to probably be... I'll probably miss the show. I'll probably just be there getting hooked like everybody else that I know. So, yeah, which is sad. But thanks so much for having us on and giving us all this opportunity, Trey. And, uh, man, keep on doing what you're doing. Sure thing. No problem. Fantastic. Um, uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us, Andrew. Actually, that's probably a pretty good reason for us to uh, shut the whole thing off. They they said just to go for, like, 30 minutes or whatever felt right. But yeah. I'm looking at the clock. It's been... <laughs> An hour and ten minutes, I don't think it's been enough, but uh, we should probably uh, just go ahead and cut the thing off, and we'll kind of keep the conversation going um, right on. on Google Plus and on the Internet. All right, guys? Wonderful. Thank All you. Right. Good. Thanks right. so much, Thanks guys. Everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks. 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 Thanks.